What's up, everybody, and welcome back to season two of Epic Rides. If you've been following along on social media this past winter, you know that Epic Rides has picked up a new partner, Fisher Power Sports. I'm super excited to share this partnership with you all, and if you're looking for a new dual sport or off-road machine, go give them a visit. At the end of last season, I alluded to the fact that my plan for this year was to spend more time off the beaten track, sharing fun routes, moto camping tips, and more. Well, here we are, kids. Strap on your hydration packs, tighten up your goggles, and let's do some back roading. Before sharing this week's route, I thought I'd give you a quick rundown of my new adventure machine, a 2022 Kawasaki KLR650. I've been an admirer of the Stone Age simplicity of the KLR for a long time. For those of you looking for more information on the Gen 3 KLRs, stay tuned. My next video will be a full review, so this is just a taste. As I mentioned a second ago, I'm riding a 2022 KLR650, and like most KLR owners, I've done a few mods right out of the gate to get her more in line with the kind of riding I plan on doing. I ordered the base model KLR with this in mind. So basic, in fact, that not only does it scream live, laugh, love, and ask to speak to the manager, but it also doesn't even have ABS. ABS is a great safety feature on the highway, but it's a colossal pain in the ass off-road if you can't turn it off. And yes, Becky, I know other bikes allow you to turn ABS off, and most bikes these days have traction control and rider settings. However, the KLR was the perfect fit for me, and I like a simple machine that's easy to fix. So what did I change with my KLR? Well, I added the Kawasaki auxiliary lighting that you can find on the Adventure model. I also added the rear pannier mounts. In retrospect, I should have not bothered with these as my soft luggage promptly sagged into the exhaust and melted on my trip up to the Great Outdoors Expo this year. At the time of this writing, I've ordered the Giant Loop Coyote soft luggage, which looks like it'll not have that problem, but we'll find out. Other than that, I've added Zeta XC Pro handguards, Happy Trails skid plate, Happy Trails extended shifter, and Moose Racing hybrid foot pegs. Oh yeah, and I added an auxiliary USB jack so I can charge things on the bike. With only 2,000 kilometers on the bike since I rolled her off the showroom floor, I'm going to order new tires this week as the stock tires are abysmal in sand, in gravel, and on wet surfaces. Future updates will definitely include suspension, bars and risers, and maybe a bigger windscreen as the stock one directs airflow directly into my face at highway speeds. I kept my Givy Easy T-Range tank bag that I've been running for the past couple of years. It's a great bag and it works for my purposes. Finally, I tried to transfer my Atlas throttle lock from the V-Strom over to the KLR, however it doesn't work correctly, so I'll have to order a KLR specific one. Okay, so in a nutshell, that's the bike. Let's talk about this week's route. I decided to see how close I could get to Ground Beach from Mars Sandhills Golf Course using trails and gravel roads. Starting from the 317 at Road 38 East, I followed Mars Sandhills Trail which consists primarily of fairly soft, very fine sand. The KLR did a pretty good job of grunting through the sand, however this trail is really designated for ATVs, side-by-sides, and full-on dirt bikes. I would say that it's well worth exploring, but just know that it'll test your sand riding skills. Sidebar, my sand riding skills are apparently non-existent, but I still had fun despite feeling like I was going to get hucked off the bike and swallowed by a sarlacc if I wasn't careful. The trails are fairly well marked, and you can beetle around for a couple hours without fear of getting too lost. In of themselves, this would be a great place to come if you want to find some challenging sand trails not far from Winnipeg. After messing around for an hour or two, I eventually found my way to Mile Road 84 North, which is great scenery and good gravel all the way to the 59 Highway. On the west side of the 59, Road 84 changes its name to Colonization Road. I followed Colonization Road a mile to Road 85 North, which according to my map would take me west to Upper Devil's Lake. So yeah, it does go near Upper Devil's Lake, but the lake itself isn't really all that accessible, and if you follow the bend north you end up in a farmer's field. I mean, it's a nice field and all, but it wasn't where I wanted to end my journey. 
So I spun around and headed south and east to road 31 east and fired north again. At the road 88 north intersection, I cut east and then north again on road 32 east, which is a nice gravel road through rolling farmland. At this point, a break for a cup of coffee was a necessity, so I pulled in at St. James Anglican Cemetery for a quick look around. This just in, it's a cemetery. There are graves and a church. I don't know what I was expecting. It was quaint enough, I suppose, and small. The church was established in 1905 on an acre of land granted by the Matson family. The cemetery was consecrated in 1910. My feelings on organized religion aside, it was a peaceful little spot and not a bad place to find yourself buried, I guess. Me, I'm gonna get taxidermied and propped up in the front yard until some college kids steal me as a prank and take me on a wild adventure similar to what's described in the historical biography named Weekend at Bernie's. Anyways, carrying on from the cemetery, Road 32 eventually becomes Road 91 North and heads east again until it cuts south and becomes Road 34 East. You follow me so far? I followed that until Lynx Lane, where I cut east again and followed the road through the town of Scanterbury and Broken Head Reserve. Eventually you meet up with the 319, which if you follow east will quickly cut south and spit you out at the 59 Highway. Had I been more on top of things in terms of mapping my route, I would have cut west on the 319 and ended up at Patricia Beach. Next time I take this route, I'm going to try that, and I recommend you do as well. Patricia Beach is quite pretty, and I'd argue that it's often the better choice than going to Grand Beach because it's extremely underutilized. Being that I didn't go that way and instead ended up at the 59, I decided to head up the 59 to Broken Head Wetland Interpretive Trail where I attempted to film a short bit about my bike without writing a script or even thinking about what I was going to say in advance. So this is kind of what we ended up with. Awesome. What's up everybody, Noel Lindsay from Epic Rides here. Uh, wanted to do a quick rundown of the brand new bike. So we've got a 2022 KLR 650 by Kawasaki. Y'all know them, y'all love them. It's the baby adventure bike. Single cylinder, thumper, it runs great. Tons of bottom end torque, not fast. Uh, to get it ready for real off-road riding, you've got to put a bit of time and effort into it, even realistically doing some trails. So on this bike I added the crash bars and the Kawasaki uh, auxiliary lights because having extra lights on the highway is nice. Lower crash bars and then I added the moose racing pegs. On the other side I added a Happy Trails extended shifter because I got great big feet. The Zeta uh, the Zeta XC Pro Bark Busters and a Happy Trails skid plate. So this bike is armored up and it's ready to go and we're going to have a ton of great adventures this year and I'm super excited. So stick with us and yeah, we're going to rock and roll. I got the bike through uh, our sponsors, uh, Fisher Power Sports. They're awesome to deal with. So if you are looking for a dual sport or an off-road adventure bike style, Head on, see, head on down to Fisher Power Sports. These guys are great. Donovan and Darcy will take care of you for sure. I um, also wanted to touch base on the new helmet. So I've got the AFX range helmet and we're gonna give it a try this year. So far so good, I'm liking it. It's nice and comfortable. Uh, the price is right for sure, for less than 300 bucks. Uh, it's dot approved, so it's got all the protection you need with a price that can't really be beat. Uh, of course, I've got my GoPro mount on it and uh, the Gardo Pack Talk Edge communication system, which is how I chat with my buddies when I'm riding. And that's the new setup. Thanks. There we go. If you're interested in Broken Head Wetland Interpretive Trail, and if you aren't, you really should be, it's a beautiful hike that I covered in an episode last year and have linked right here. Well, maybe, if I remember when I upload this. Otherwise, just go find the video on the channel. As an added bonus, you get to see a bog and a metric butt-ton of carnivorous plants. Anyways, that was this week's adventure. After poking around the parking lot for a while, I turned the bike around and headed back down the 59 and back to Winnipeg. This route's an easy one to do in a single day, and if you've got an adventure bike, it's the perfect way to get the tires dirty instead of riding the highways. As always, thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please take a minute and hit the like button, the subscribe button, and ring the bell icon so you get notified next time I put a video out. Until then, 
remember that while it's a great big world out there, you can find adventure in your own backyard. So get out there and enjoy it, you animals. Peace.